It's the NFL on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the New York Giants and the Houston Texans. All that and more coming up next. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air with Charles Davis. As always, I'm Brandon Gordon. Now, Charles, you and I, we've done a lot of games together. Always seems like we're rehashing the same storylines. Turnovers, of course, always a big story. Quarterback play, running backs, yada, yada, yada. But getting ready for this one, one word kept coming to mind, and that's preparation. Well, it's critical to be prepared physically, mentally. When you think about getting ready for an NFL game, you have to wonder, what will they throw at us that maybe we haven't seen before? Two-minute drill, maybe different things like that. Got to be prepared. You're exactly right. And we are underway from NRG Stadium in Houston. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Texans offense heading out behind their quarterback in his second season. Last year's Offensive Rookie of the Year, C.J. Stroud. And he's coming off of a truly remarkable rookie season where he quieted a lot of his doubters in a most emphatic fashion. Remember, going into the draft, many thought he was the number two quarterback coming out of college. He proved quickly he was a top quarterback going into the NFL. One of the best rookie seasons by a quarterback in recent memory. And what's scary about it, he's not even close to reaching his ceiling. A first carry here for Joe Mixon. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Back to Mixon on second down. And they'll stop him after a gain of a couple to the 33. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. And yeah, they'll look to avoid an early three and out here on third and four. A shotgun snap to Stroud. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Texans first down as he'll be marked down a yard or two past the marker following a gain of six. Well, they kept it simple there, CD, only needing the short gain to move the chain, so they didn't want to go with a deep throw. They just go with that safer, shorter throw and able to convert. Nothing wrong with that at all, partner. Check the box, right? Make sure you pick up the first down. Offense is getting established. You're moving the ball. You're not turning it over. Check, check, check. They like what they're doing early in the game. Bobby Okereke making that tackle. If you're a coach, you'll absolutely take that run every time on first down because it really sets you up to go in a number of directions here on second. Ball placed at the 45 for second and five. Option right, here's Stroud. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. He'll get two on the keeper, but it becomes now a third down. Anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expected to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk-reward and him taking hits, I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. From the gun on third down, here's Stroud. And this pass broken up. And the contact well-timed there. And now fourth down. And that's exactly what defenses talk about. You've got to find ways to get off the field when you can, especially on third down. And third down defense going to be vital in this game. Able to knock that one away and force a fourth down. On is the punter Townsend as he gets this one away. And this is a beauty as that ball is going to angle out at the six-yard line. 
First go on offense for the Giants under the guidance of Daniel Jones, the former Duke Blue Devil. So this is where we find out about the game plan and the trust factor, don't we? In this situation, the natural thing is take care of the ball. Run it inside. Everyone cover it. Just, you know, get yourself some room and let your punter punt it out of there. But when you've really got a QB you can trust, you might want to take a little shot early and try and create some space. Now Jones. He'll get this into the hands of the wideout from LSU. Well, hang on a second here, because on that last play, it appears one of the Giants shaken up. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. This second and four. Throwing Jones. Now this thrown deep for Slayton. And he bats it away and it falls down incomplete. I like the fact that he took the shot deep downfield. Even if you don't get the catch, maybe you get a defensive penalty and pick up the yardage that way. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Looking to throw. Jones. Now this thrown deep for Slayton. And got his man complete. Down to the 10. And all the way in. Touchdown, New York. Darius Slayton, 89 yards. And the Giants are on the board first here this afternoon. So on third and medium, they dial up the pass, and it works to hit the end zone. And it's really not a surprise to me. That's a throwing down in the NFL because of how tough it is to run the football. But what offenses like to do is still show run formations to make them respect it and throw out of those. In this case, they took a nice shot at the end zone and made it pay off. Graham Gano on for the extra point. It's up, it's good, and the Giants have a 7-0 lead. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it was finished off by a touchdown by the New York Giants. Gano now following the touchdown here to kick it away. Escapes the defender. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. The defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And nowhere to run on the interior of that defensive line. He'll get back only to the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. And that'll be off the mark too far out in front, and it's incomplete. I you put just a little bit too much heat on that one. When you throw it to the outside, you do have to be careful because you got to keep it away from the defender. But you also have to give your own guy a chance, too. The threat of a second straight punt to start the game is looming as they come up third and ten. 
And Stroud now to throw. He gets this in the hands of Mixon. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. They do get seven out of that, but not enough to prevent a fourth down. I know where we're headed on this. Terrific catch. Gets his feet down. Sets up a fourth down in short situation. But I bet we're wondering, why didn't he get to the first down marker running his route? Am I correct? You got to know where the marker is, right? Got to figure it out. I know every receiver has taught that. Sometimes circumstances change it. At least they have an opportunity to make a decision with not much yardage to go. So possession goes over here on the punt. And it'll be giant football first and ten. The Giants offense at the line, ready to begin their next drive. They'll be looking to duplicate that first drive, the one that got them that 7-0 lead. Of course they would. I mean, look, they're on the road. So getting the 7-0 lead was huge for them, right? Imagine getting up two touchdowns on the road, taking the crowd out of the game. It'd be ideal. Well, it's almost as if they didn't leave the field after their first drive. They picked right up where they left off. Another good throw there. And this offense, humming here in the early going. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. They run with the former Buffalo Bill, Devin Singletary. And they're down to the 41. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Right back to Singletary on second down. They follow up the gain of two with a gain of one that time. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You may also just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down. Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. The line to gain is the 33 on third down. Back to throw. Jones. That's caught. Allen Robinson. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 20-yard line. A big third down pickup of 20 yards. Well, as a coach, you absolutely love seeing your offense find their rhythm early, and that's exactly what we've seen so far. They had a touchdown on their opening drive, and now they connect here for another nice gain for a first down. This offense is moving the ball well exactly as he drew it up in practice. They'll run on first down with Singletary. And all the way down inside the five to the four. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. That's pretty much meat and potatoes right there, wasn't it? Just go right at them and let your big horse charge up the middle. Not too fancy there, was it? Nothing fancy at all, challenging that defense. And on that go-around, the offense won the challenge. Singletary is not going to get a whole lot, maybe a yard down to the three. Only a yard that time, second and goal. Looking at this now, you got a couple more cracks here this close. Sneak it? I don't think you even go into a huddle. Just line up, snap it, and fall in behind those guys into the end zone. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Looking to throw. Jones toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Well, congratulations, Mr. Lucky. You know that's one that he would love to have back. That should have been picked off. Threw that one into a crowd. He's just so fortunate the defender couldn't react fast enough and get his hands up. Third down and goal now on this Houston defense. Not backing down. They'll look for one more stop. They'll look to run with Singletary. Well, they hit him in the backfield, and he will not escape. And that is not going to get it done. Tough sledding. They lose a yard there on third. But when the ball snapped from the three down near the goal line, I think in days gone by, we thought many teams would run the football. But on third down in today's game, I expect them to throw it. 
A little counterintuitive there. They tried to run it, instead spilled for a loss. So Jones off, Graham Gano on here for the New York Giants field goal. From the left hash, he'll have to cut this at a tight angle. Gano's kick is good. So a long drive gets him down inside the five, but ultimately they settle for just the field goal. And I have to think that if maybe they were a yard closer, that would have made their decision tougher, and I think they likely would have gone for it. But in this situation, they just decided to take the three, and I think it was a smart move. So after the made field goal, 10-0 here early as the kick's away. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. The Texans offense now, they get set to head back onto the field. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. And the slot man goes in motion left. He's got it complete to Stephon Diggs. Down to the 10. Touchdown, Houston. Stephon Diggs, 68 yards. And the Texans are able to strike quickly here as they are in for six. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, <laughs> all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. There aren't any speed <laughs> limits out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. Kaimi Fairbairn on for the extra point. And they're back within a field goal. It's 10-7 now. Well, the offense wasn't out there for a long time, but they were out there for a good time. One play, and they're able to hit pay dirt. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. The Giants offense at the line, ready to begin their next drive. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Handoff on the option to Singletary. He takes this for three to the 29. But well, obviously they would have at least liked to have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage. Instead now, they're dealing with second and long. I thought they would have passed it after the penalty. Probably wish they would have now. Second and 12. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. That ball caught by Slayton. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. 
10-7 our score after one right here on EA Sports. Giant football, and we're ready to begin the second quarter as they've got it with a first and ten. Singletary here running out of the gun. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still. Got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Just need a yard here. Second and one. Off play action. Jones. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. Four yards the pick up. First down. Back to throw. Jones. There's a short one to the tight end, Johnson. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and it'll be second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. From the 29, here's the second and five. Off the play fake. Jones rolling to his right and he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a halt. He'll wind up with positive yardage. It's a gain of three, but now it's third down. I certainly like what he did right there because he smartly wanted to avoid forcing anything downfield because nothing appeared to be open. Nice harmless slide there to avoid the big hit and he gets a small gain on the play. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Giants first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Now a first and 10 at the 11. In motion right is Robinson. And they'll fake it on the jet sweep, and instead, a handoff up the middle. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. But that's not an easy play for a defensive end because most of his responsibility has him getting upfield and working. But how about his vision to see where the play was going? Crashed down inside and tackled him for a loss. Right back to Singletary on second down. And yeah, he'll be dropped at about the 11 after only a yard. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Now Jones from the gun on third down. And he will take it on in for a giant touchdown. Daniel Jones taking it in from 11 yards out. And the Giants had six to their lead. That's a really good decision right there outside of the pocket. You've got to know the right time to shift from passer to runner. He was looking and looking. Nothing there. You can almost feel the brainwaves firing as he calculates. I think I can win a race to the pylon. And he turns out to be right. Touchdown. Gano for the extra point. It's good to make it 17-7. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And in the end, the finishing touch, an 11-yard run.
Gano now following the touchdown here to kick it away. And he takes this near the 25. Just a little pass there. Call it the 26. And now out comes Houston. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that success here. And it's rare for those moments to happen. Incredible when they do. And you saw the celebration. Pure, unbridled joy after that one. Stroud looking to throw. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. Good defensive call right there because they had someone shadowing him along his entire route, and he was right there ready to provide a hit that prevents him from making another catch to his big start. Now a second and ten. Stroud to throw it. He'll get this into the hands of Nico Collins. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That'll be a pickup of 10 as they try to recover from this 10-point deficit. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. Mixon with a first down carry. <laughs> And good running there as he'll take this all the way up to midfield. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. Defensively, they were in the 3-4. Solid run up the middle. What made it successful? Well, what you have to do is control the nose guard, but sometimes you don't do it by blocking him. You do it by influencing him. Get him moving to one side or the other and hit him back on the opposite. to mix it on the check down so just three yards on the completion there at its second down so many times you hear today's nfl described as a space game get your best players into space with the football in their hands that's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner get him out in the flat and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field Nixon will try the right side Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. And this offense on third down today, just one for three thus far. This is third and four. Stroud. Yeah, this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. Well, it hasn't been a banner first half for the defense trying to cover him today, but they'll take that one right there, helping force that incompletion. Here's Tommy Townsend on to punt. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Out of bounds as he appeared to be looking for the corner. He got it. They're going to mark this at the four-yard line. Darius Slayton and the rest of this offense about to begin their next drive. Making his presence felt early in this one. First half, already over the century mark. How about the yards per completion, too? That's a pretty darn good number there. Number of catches, but he's shredding defense. He's getting big yardage with each and every one of them. On first down, they'll start out with Singletary. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. Really shouldn't be a surprise. It's going to be hard to move people in this situation. You know they're going to bring the pressure defensively. Because I remember playing in these spots, and my coach was always saying, don't be afraid to try and create a safety, too. They're going to bring pressure. Right back to Singletary on second down. And he'll find a little space. He gets this up near the 10. It's a four-yard pickup there, and it leaves him with third and five. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. Well, they don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. 
From the gun on third down, Jones. That is caught, and he will be out of bounds. A good yardage there, and he'll get a second to catch his breath as it leads us right into the two-minute warning. On first down, he'll drop to throw. This one hauled in, and again, it's Robinson. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and that'll bring up second down. Timing is so important on a route like this because he's going to line up out right and then cut straight across the field. I think the ball might have come out a counter two too late because by the time he was able to secure it, not much of a chance to turn it upfield. Throwing again on second down. Jones, there's a short one to the tight end, Johnson. It'll be a pickup of four, good enough to earn him yet another first down. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Back to throw again. Flushed out right. Good coverage downfield led to him taking off, picking up the first down on a 13-yard run. Now a timeout called for by the offense as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. He finds Robinson. And that's good for a gain of six, and it's second down. Flag comes in, this might be a free play. Quick completion here to Johnson. So offsides the call, and they understandably decline it. And this is why we're seeing more and more teams hiring that one coach to the staff that's in charge of all these things. This one's minor. It's pr pretty easy to figure out. But all the game management stuff, trying to help out the head coach in his decision-making process. They'll look to throw here on first down. There's a short one to the tight end, Johnson. Sheds off the tackle. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. He's been a one-man wrecking crew these last couple of plays. This time, 18 more and a first down. So many times in my career, I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. They'll run a draw now with Singletary. Now the Giants will use the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with 25 seconds to go here in half number one. Second and ten. Operating from the gun. Jones throwing middle, and it's complete. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. Good. 
So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. This will be spotted at the 20, so it's a 30-yard attempt. Gano's kick is good, and that will open the lead up now to 20-7. to so a late three there, and that'll help as they head into the break. Talk about situational football and something they've worked on since the OTAs and mini camps the previous summer. They take care of the ball, get three points, knowing they're going to get the ball to start the second half. That's the old two-for-one special to finish things off. So barring a touchback, this likely the final act of the half as the kick is away. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. Final play of the half. Stroud taking a shot for Dell here. And it's knocked away and incomplete. So we've reached the intermission in what right now is a 13-point game. As we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman in our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. We were certainly treated to an entertaining first half. Both these teams with some high points and maybe a couple of low points as well. So it's going to be a question of who can be the most disciplined team going forward. Okay, Coach, thanks as always to you and the gang in Orlando as we welcome everyone back in for quarter number three. Second half ready to get rolling. The Giants with a lead, and they are set to receive this kick. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. The Giants offense at the line, ready to begin their next drive. Here's Jones, throwing to start the drive. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. The result, only four yards there on the play. And that will bring up second down. Operating from the gun, Jones. He's got this complete to Robinson. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. It's a first down, his fourth catch of the game after having three in the first half. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode Really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. They'll run out of the gun with Singletary. And just one yard here from the 49 to the 50. Well, how about the big guy there showing some agility? He just float from his D-tackle position in order to make that play. Ball right on the 50-yard line. Here's the second down and nine. Off the bootleg, Jones going quickly there, but it's incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up, not that time. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Looking to throw, Jones buying time to his left. 
And Jones will hit the deck here. And he is able to pick up the first down. That one good for 16 as the drive continues. It certainly appears that he's been able to get a read on how they've wanted to contain him in this game. He's seen some places where he can beat them in big spots. And right there, he slides in with ease for the first down. They'll give this to Singletary running right. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. This defense could use a few more plays like that right now. It certainly could, but think about it from an offense's perspective right now. They've got a lead, but they don't want to throttle down too much and stall themselves. Still want to move at a nice pace. Right back to Singletary on second down. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. Eighth play of the drive, forthcoming, and they need eight yards on third down. Back to throw. Jones. And this pass broken up. And the contact well timed there, and now fourth down. That's a tough spot for a running back coming out of the backfield because you know he's got to look for the football. Knowing full well, he's got a man coming his way full steam, and he broke that one up. Gano's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. Well, they picked up right where they left off from the first half. First drive after the break, they come away with three and increase that lead. Yeah, and you just want to keep building on that lead, don't you? Whether it's six points or three points, take everything you can get, keep maneuvering, keep adding to it, keep making it difficult for them to come back. After knocking through the field goal, here's Gano back out there now for the kickoff. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Here's the Texans offense now, readying for their first possession of the second half. And their deficit a little wider now than it was at halftime following the field goal a moment ago. But the goal is still the same because you know they want to come out, establish a rhythm in the second half, and get going. Make no mistake about it, though. Kicking field goals, not in their game plan. They need to get the ball in the end zone. They begin with a run by Mixon. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Here's Stroud. Throw over the middle is taken in by Dell. So the completion good for just three. And that's going to set up a tough third and nine. Slam route's effective no matter who's running the route and catching the ball. But when you have a receiver of that stature, you have to be a little bit more precise throwing it. You don't have the same catch radius with the bigger targets. Now Stroud. He's got his target. That's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Excellent play there on third down. Give him 25 yards. With the kind of game he's had so far, you had to know that on third down, that they would be looking his way, and they did for big yardage and a first down. I think the defense fell asleep at the switch on that one. I would have doubled him, tripled him, anything to keep the ball out of his hands. So the drive takes him into Giants territory now. First and 10 at the 46. Throwing now is Stroud. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Partner, what we're seeing so far is a defense is certainly coordinated. Both levels doing their jobs in tandem. The back helping the front, the front helping the back. The pressure got home on that last play and forced him to try and throw through contact and short of the sticks.
Stroud working out of the gun. Over the middle, he gets it to Collins. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. That time, they hit him out of the slot on the drag. And that route takes some fortitude from the guy running it because he knows he's going through the briar patch, as I like to call <laughs> it, right? He's trying to work his way through all that traffic and people wanting to put a little contact on it. Really well done. From the gun on third down, here's Stroud. And he can't get away from the pressure the Giants get there. Dexter Lawrence coming in to drop him for a loss of eight. And it also brings up fourth. But found his way into the backfield, and he simply would not be denied. Well, they say that life's all about opportunities, and that holds true when you're playing defense as well. How about him seeing that chance, making the most of it, did a great job of wrapping him up and bringing him down. The Texans send the punter out as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. Back on offense, New York gets set to take over. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yep. Run what Put you do best. On the gas. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. And showcasing those strong legs on that run. Getting through one tackle. Now she winds up getting eight there. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Right back to Singletary on second down. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Four yards, the pickup, first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. They go right back to Singletary. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. From the 38 now, here's second down and seven. Singletary, they'll go up the middle. And not much room to speak of. He'll get about three up to the 41. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Now Jones. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. With that, he's up to 160 yards receiving now for the ball game. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 49-yard line. A short throw pulled in by Bellinger. Only able to gain a couple there, and it'll be second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. Second down and eight. Singletary going to get the handoff. Oh, some strong running. And he's taken down inside the 30. 75 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense get a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard.
So the false start will back them up five. That flag accepted, and it backs the offense up a little bit. The false start backs him up five, first and 15. Throwing Jones. There's a short one to the tight end, Johnson. And he'll be out of bounds, able to get it down to the 25 there. That was the eighth play of the drive, so a somewhat fitting pickup of eight yards. Well, that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large-bodied tight ends, and why not? Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches want them to catch the football first. Back now in Houston. It's the Giants with the football and also the lead as we get set to start quarter number four. This offense so far on third down. Can't fault these numbers. Seven for nine thus far. This is third and seven. There's a short one to the tight end, Johnson. And out of bounds right around the 20. It'll go as a gain of four. And that'll bring up fourth down. Now that's going to be a tough one to explain when they get together and watch the game film, isn't it? I mean, they had the right call, had the out route. He's got to know where the first down sticks are, yet he steps out of bounds that close. Not their best play. Jones throwing on fourth down. Throw left side taken in by Slayton. And he is out of bounds. Looks like right at the 15. A solid pickup of five and a very solid fourth down conversion and defensively pure frustration. So this offense able to convert on fourth and now a fresh set of downs here. First and ten. Now they show jet sweep but instead a run up the middle here. And he will take it on in for a giant touchdown. Devin Singletary, a 15-yard touchdown run. And the Giants have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. Well, I've heard you use the term put-away drive, and that right there seemed like the definition of a put-away drive. Yeah, it certainly just pops right up out of the book, doesn't it? Because up two scores already, just wanted to possess the football, keep converting and picking up first downs. And if the drive ends in three points, that's terrific. If it ends in a touchdown, Fantastic. Well, the PAT would extend their lead, but there is a flag on the play. Well, trailing here in the fourth quarter, and that personal foul, that only adds to the hole that they're currently standing in. Yeah, absolutely a bad job of just losing your cool and letting your anger take over. Mistakes like that, not going to help you at this stage of the game. After the roughing penalty on the PAT, they'll kick off from 15 yards further upfield. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out and to that end a nice pass play there to push things downfield yeah and we know in this league 
a loss is a loss and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or boy something that feels a little bit cheap he's got it at the 15 touchdown houston take dell 68 yards and the texans are able to make some inroads here to that deficit he's got them out now to a three score lead here in the fourth quarter after that one cd and well, he looked right off the line like he knew that that ball was coming his way, and he secured it for six points. Yeah, and I think when you're leading by a healthy margin already, it actually loosens you up and allows you to take maybe a few more chances and definitely play with more confidence because he certainly saw something he could exploit in the defense. He made sure to let his quarterback know, just get it to me. And the rest was all up to him, and he delivered and made it a three-score game. Well, it's still an uphill battle from here, that's for sure, but that makes it a two-score game. And now we see why teams practice so much on the two-point conversion, why you have more than one play ready, because you may need multiples to throw out a ball game. There's a great example right there. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. Oh, a dangerous return man showing it here. And he nearly broke that for more, but as it is, still a good return. They'll start the drive right around the 37. The Giants offense at the line, ready to begin their next drive. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Here's a second and five. Looking to throw. Jones. Again, it's Johnson. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. Eighth catch for him now. He's been a big factor. And it's a first down. The passing game continues to be their friend, even with a stable lead here in the fourth, Charles. They're going back to that well. Yeah, with their overall philosophy, you know that they trust their quarterback. He's been able to throw it well. They continue to throw these safe passes. Who can blame them? Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. That one goes for 24 yards. Partner, I like that they're staying aggressive on offense because to me, this drive is what is known as a put-away drive. You score here, that might put this one to bed. I like the fact that they're playing with confidence and not playing with fear. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. They'll look to throw again. Completing it to the right side, Johnson. And the Giants are going to have a first and goal as he'll be taken down at the seven-yard line. Well, normally you might say start running the football. You've got the lead here in the fourth quarter, but the way that they've passed it with such success, I don't know, maybe keep throwing it. Yeah, I think you brought up something that goes against conventional wisdom, right? In this stage of the game, you would think you would switch to a running attack, but you're exactly right. They've thrown it so well throughout the game, and trusting this quarterback, I think he continued to do so. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop him right around the one. 96 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. His larger bit of the air attack has gotten him down here, but now is where you start to lean on that running game. That's a good pickup there on first and goal. Second and goal from the one. Operating from the gun, Jones. Touchdown, Giants! Darius Slayton 
with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Giants have made it a three-score game now here in the fourth. There was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Gano now to add the extra point. And the lead opens up now to 22 points. They're down here in the fourth, and that personal foul penalty is not going to help. No, in these types of situations, players will tell you that's extra intensity. From where we sit, it's actually frustration, not a good play. After the roughing penalty on the PAT, they'll kick off from 15 yards further upfield. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. And here comes the Texans now. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go-around. So first and 10 now from the 30. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. He gets this in the hands of Mixon. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit is going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth, but a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where as coaches, you're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to... Look at this, middle of the field, a breakaway. Touchdown, Texans. Nico Collins. 58 yards. And the Texans have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. You've got to understand situational football because they're playing with the lead here late in the ball game. So the back defender has got to be as deep as the deepest receiver. Keep everything in front of you. Rally up and make the play. Yeah, you would think they had the three-score lead. Now it's down to two, but three-score lead here late that they wouldn't give up a big pass play like that, but they did. And, of course, on the two-point try, had the option to run or pass. They pass it there, and it works. Felt pretty straightforward, didn't it? An open receiver. Ball's put on him. Two points for them. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And this is going to be covered up by the Giants. And that's why you have your hands team out there on the field. Those are the best guys ready to make that play. And let's face it, it was executed well. It wasn't a bad kick. It wasn't anything like that. Just that the normal outcome actually came to play. Analytics would tell you it's a very low possibility of getting the ball for the team kicking it in an onside kick situation. You're all about the numbers, aren't all you? All about the numbers, baby. It's a new game now. They don't lie.
The give up the middle to Singletary. And a very determined run there as he'll take this all the way down to the 27. Good effort. 112 yards rushing now for Singletary, and he's got a first down. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. And he's going to go down here. A sack. They push him back to the 34. The defensive end, Daniil Hunter, drops him. Hunter may have found a new home with the Texans, but he's still the same dominant defender he's always been, coming off a year in which he produced a league-leading 23 tackles for loss, along with 16 and a half sacks. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. On the handoff, it's Singletary. And they only get a yard back there. They'll be left with a third down and long. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Going right side here, and that's complete. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 17-yard line. That was no third and two. That was third and 16, but they get the conversion anyway. Three tight ends in the ball game here on first and 10. A give, Singletary right side. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. Now second and five. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. And he will take it on in for a giant touchdown. Devin Singletary with now two fourth quarter touchdowns. And the Giants tack on another score as they have dominated this fourth quarter. And he certainly played a pivotal role with those two TDs and why they're up on the scoreboard right now. Well, someone's all about winning, aren't they? Because he's not worried about the number. Sure, it's great to have two touchdowns. But the bottom line is what he's doing is contributing to their lead. He wants to continue to do so. Gano for the extra point. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. A drive that time of six plays. And it was finished off by a Devin Singletary touchdown run. Gano now following the touchdown here to kick it away. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. And the football going back over now to the Houston Texans. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. 
At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense, they're just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Stroud out of the gun here. Oh, and that'll be incomplete. Oh, he took a shot as he let that go. And it's going to bring up a third down. This defense has passed its first two tests by forcing back-to-back -back incompletions. They know that there's probably another throw coming on third down. Let's see if they decide to force the issue by sending people on a blitz. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. And Stroud now to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And a penalty flag comes in as that one winds up incomplete. But the contact is going to move the ball well downfield. Maybe a critical mistake at this juncture as now they've got a first and ten. Stroud. Throw right side taken in by Collins. And he's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. But following the play now, they're going to stop the clock here as a man is shaken up. Well, hopefully, obviously, nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, are going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. Line of scrimmage, the 24. This is second and six. A shotgun snap to Stroud. He'll drop this one down to Mixon. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Here goes Stroud again. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. Now throw on the run, but that's going to be incomplete. I think this is what this game's become now. You just go deep, see if we can get something to go our way. Yeah, not the most creative or most inventive play call there, but not much has worked for them throughout this game. They're almost at a loss about what to dial up. Here's second and ten. Stroud looking to throw. And that is caught. Touchdown, Texans. Stephon Diggs, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Texans are able to cut into that deficit. And yeah, that touchdown counts for their team. But I think it counts more for the fantasy guys, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's just something maybe positive to look at on film. But this one's over, let's be honest. Yeah, I, th I agree with you totally on that one. Fairbair now to add the extra point. And the lead will be cut down to 14. So that drives seven plays in length. And it's finished off by the touchdown by Stephon Diggs. So two scores down, time definitely not an ally, but here comes the onside kick. And this will be recovered by the Giants, and that ought to just about do it. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. The Giants offense and running back Devin Singletary headed back onto the field.
And as we roll through some of the highlights, we see how crucial he's been to their success in this one. When he's in this type of a groove and his offensive linemen are creating running lanes for him, he can really put on a show, and he's done so here. The D can only stop it one more time as they take the knee. The Texans going to signal for their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 33 seconds remaining. So he'll take a knee here to wrap this one up, and he's going to want to keep that game ball. He was sensational. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world, and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. But Charles, a lot of happy faces heading into the tunnel as this one ends, and understandably so. Not only did they get the win, but boy, their offense was on fire in this ball game. And partner, I have no idea what the top speed is on one of those high-end sports cars. What's the top gear you can get into? This offense, they certainly were there in this one, huh? Everything clicking for them in this contest, the kind of performance that they're going to cherish. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. So long from Houston.